from abuja youth have called on the youth across the nation to be ready to vote massively for their preferred candidate in the 2023 general elections the youth who expressed this in abuja during a national unity carnival says nigerians must look beyond temporal gains from politicians and vote wisely to ensure development in the country and this national uh, unity carnival is for us the nigerian youth to come together and create a new nigeria to get a new nigeria we are planning on getting a new nigeria we are coming together in order to bring the new nigeria out we want to be united and you know our general election, Nigeria general election is at hand now. So we need to come together and make a new Nigeria to work for the betterment of the country and our dear nation. The youth will benefit from this in different angles. We want to be having this contact with our leader to tell them what Nigeria need. To tell them how we can grow the country, the nation. To make things work. Because there are so many youth graduates that are on the street working from here to there without a job. So we are working together. What we are talented. We have this sense of organizing things. We want to make the Nigeria work. We want to make the country work for the betterment of everybody. My message to the youth is they should come out. They should stand strong no matter what. They should stand strong and believe that we are going to get a new Nigeria. And the new Nigeria is what we will get. As long as we live, we need to stand strong, we need to be united. And there is a saying that united we stand, united we stand, divided we fall. Each and every one of us have been wounded in one way or the other. The other tribes, the various tribes are complaining, but we believe in global love and unity ambassadors and uh, you know we believe that the healing is possible, that a new Nigeria is possible. And that is why we are here today to pass the message that for a new Nigeria, where Nigerians, the office of the citizen, will be exalted above any, you know, political office holder. You know, we are tired of politicians holding us at ransom, dividing us with, you know, ethnicity, with religion, and all that. So we believe that Nigeria, we only Nigeria is our first and our last home. We have no other place. Even if you travel abroad, they will demand for your Nigerian passport. That's to tell you that you are not from there. That any time, any day you do something wrong, they will deport you into your country, Nigeria. If you do anything in Nigeria, nobody will deport you anywhere because you are part and parcel of this Nigeria. And we want our, the Nigerian government to, you know, work more on the peace, the issue of uh, peace and security. Because it's really a challenge in Nigeria because no country, no economy, no nation, succeed in, in, a, in, a, in an atmosphere where there is acrimony, where there is no peace and unity. So the, the, our political class to work more in uniting us, in doing those things that brings us together, in doing those things that see us, if possible for me, the issue of a state of origin should be even abolished from our national life. Because it's another thing when you come, where are you from? You understand? We are, the common thing is that we are Nigerians. That's the way we should be seeing ourselves, not uh, where are you from. Treating people based on ethnicity and religion. I think those things are the paramount thing that government should look at and abolish completely. Let Nigerians be seeing themselves as one. If you go to America, you're an American citizen. If you go to UK, you're a UK citizen. Nobody asks you which tribe of UK are you coming from. Today in UK, a man from, uh, is it uh, India also, is the present uh, uh, Prime Minister of UK. That means in UK, everyone is treated as one, equal right and justice. That's what I want Nigerian you know, politicians to look at. The Nigerian government should have the political will to deal with insecurity. All this one, the kidnappers, the Boko Haram uh, people, the unknown government, how many persons have been persecuted, you understand, to a reasonable conclusion. If a, a Boko Haram member or a, or a bandit is caught, let the person face the, the full weight of the law. Others will now take, you know, leave from me that if I do such thing, I will be persecuted. You understand? To the reasonable conclusion. So look at a situation where people are afraid of going to farm and there's a level of uh, food insecurity as a result of that. So Nigeria, the government should be able to have that political will to deal with this insecurity decisively.
mobilize our armed forces, pay them well, monitor the resources that are flowing from government, not okay, they work, monkey the work, bamboo the, the shop, not when the boys, the, 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 the food soldiers are in the field fighting, Organs are here in Abuja enjoying the money, meant to take care of the men that are supposed to be, that are fighting the war or executing the war in the field. Then the issue of youth inclusiveness. The truth is this, let's tell ourselves the truth. Because there are, they, they say we are leaders of tomorrow. But up to today, the people that said we are leaders of tomorrow, as at 1980, are the ones still leading us today. So uh, they are even taking our turn and they are fighting to take the turn of our grandchildren, not even our own children again. No, it's an issue. When your grandmother tells you you are the leader of tomorrow, he has taken your turn and he's still taking the, the, the position of your grandchild and still telling him, telling your grandchildren uh, that it is your turn. It's, a, it's an embarrassing thing. The youth should be included because the truth is, because of the way we are excluding the youth in the issue of governance, bringing the old men back to stay retain power at 80 or 60, the total retirement, civil service retirement is at the age of 60. And at 70, somebody is still contesting to be the president. You know, it's a, it's a very big challenge to us. You should be included. Because if, uh, without you coming to power, it will be an, a very strong issue because there's something you cannot look at your father and tell your father. If he's the one sitting, you know, sitting at the helm of affairs, you cannot actually tell him, Papa, you are not doing well. You know? But if he's your fellow youth, you know, you are, you, there are some issues that you know that affects you, that the person will address, you know, conclusively. Thank you. The main reason why we used to face this insecurity is through using gender, one, gender-based violence, or one, then two, then through tribe indifferences. When I say tribe indifferences, I need, I, I mean, uh, the differences, you see, show all the, uh, the solidarity, not the solidarity, not only the, the, the solidarity, but the differences that we used to show between some tribe and other tribes. The tribes Hausa, the tribes Igbo, tribe Yoruba, and other indigenous tribes in the country. It's the differences that we still show. This is what brings insecurity in my country. But through this national unity, we will gather, we will tackle, so that any tribe will be the same. We will not face any kind of insecurity at all through this this is why we sit and met we sit and met with some stakeholders with some many dignitaries to know wh which way we will we follow to help nigerians to to go away from this insecurity in this country that is why we said we have to gather a movement of a national unity that will comprise with all the state the all tribes to ensure that such insecurity, insecurity have been go away from the from the conditions or from the environments we are.